गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू आई होप यू आर डूंग वेल एंड स्टडी हार्ड एट होम लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ आईबॉल रिफ्रेक्टिव एरियस ऑफ द आईबॉल वंस वी अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द आईबॉल रिफ्रेक्टिव एरियस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द विजुअल पाथवे द सेकंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंपोनेंट ऑफ दिस सिस्टम when we discuss or uh, see the visual pathway in the exam point of view it is important in theory as well as in your practical sessions when you see the visual pathway this figure you see lot of time in dissection hall when we remove the brain in anatomy dissection you observe this the pathway of optic nerve the optic nerve which extend from this eyeball second structure is this optic chiasma optic tract and radiations this is the basic basic thing that we see in visual pathway visual pathway that means extend from the eyeball up to the visual cortex when the synapses or axons collects from third layer of the retina to form optic nerve this optic nerve extends from this eyeball its journey from eyeball towards visual cortex is called visual system or visual pathway the visual system is the part of the central nervous system which gives organisms the ability to process visual detail and sight as well as enabling the formation of several non image photo response functions together the cornea and lens refract light into a small image and shine it on the retina the retina transduces this image into action potential pulse using rods and cones the optic nerve then carries these pulses through optic canal upon reaching the optic chiasma the nerve fiber decusset decusset means shifting from left becomes right and vice versa that means right becomes left these fibers then branch and terminate at cortex that is visual area the retina consists of a large number of photoreceptor cells which contains particular protein molecules called opsins in human there are observed two types of opsins are involved in conscious vision these are respectively called rhodopsins and conopsins an opsin absorbs a photon and transmits a signal to the cell through a signal transduction pathway resulting in hyperpolarization of the photoreceptor the rods and cones differ in function the rods are found primarily in the periphery of the retina and are used to see at low levels of light while there are seen three types of cones 
that differ in the wavelengths of light they absorb. They are usually called short or blue, middle or green, and long or red. The cones are used primarily to distinguish color and other features of the visual world at normal levels of the light. In the retina, the photoreceptors synapse directly onto the bipolar cells that is the second layers in retina. In last class we discussed the layers of the retina. The first layer that was the layer of photoreceptors, second layer is this bipolar cells. These bipolar cells which in turn synapse onto the ganglion cell that is the third layer of the retina. That ganglion cells of the outermost layer which will then conduct action potential towards brain. A significant amount of visual processing arises from the patterns of communications between neurons in the retina. In addition, other neurons in the retina, particularly the horizontal and amacrine cells transmit information laterally. That means from a neuron in one layer to the adjacent neuron in the same layer, resulting in more complex receptive fields that can be either indifferent to color and sensitive to motion or sensitive to color and indifferent to motion. The retina adapts to change in light through the use of rods. In the dark, the chromophore retinal has a bent shape called cis retinal. When the light interacts with the retina, it changes conformation to a straight form called trans retinal and breaks away from offset. This process is called bleaching because the purified rhodopsin changes from violet to colorless in the light. At baseline in the dark, the rhodopsin absorbs no light and releases glutamate which inhibits the bipolar cells. This inhibits the release of neurotransmitters from the bipolar cells to the ganglion cells. Now when there is a light present, glutamate secretion ceases thus no longer inhibiting the bipolar cell from releasing neurotransmitters to the ganglion cell and therefore an image can be detected. The final result of all this processing is five different populations of ganglion cells that send signal, that send visual information to the brain. There are different kinds of cells, M cells, P cells, K cells, another population that is intrinsically photosensitive and a final population that is used for the eye moment. The M cells that are sensitive to depth, indifferent to color and rapidly adapt to a stimulus. B cells that are sensitive to color and sh shape. K cells that are sensitive to color and indifferent to shape or depth. While the remaining two groups, another population that is intrinsically photosensitive and last group that is the final population that is used for the eye moments. Now this is the diagram showing you the structure of the visual pathway. Now when we see this structurally, just see with my pointer, these are the eyeballs. Just see towards my pointer, these are the eyeballs. This first part is showing, and this uppermost part showing visual field of respective eyeballs. When you see carefully, this is the visual field of this right eyeball, this is the visual field of respective left eyeballs. 
Now from this eyeballs, there is in the extension of this object now. This is the first. I highlight here visual field. The pathway extend from the front to the back of the brain. Here I highlight this innermost part of the eyeball known as retina. This is optic nerve. This junction optic chiasma. These are optic tracts that extend from optic chiasma. Then next is lateral geniculate nucleus of thalamus. These are optic radiations. This ends at visual cortex. Now, when you see this visual pathway, the characteristic of visual pathway, extension of visual pathway, it is precise retinotopic organization. Deficits due to lesions of the pathway gives valuable localizing information. Now when we see the details of extension of this pathway, this pathway begins or beginning is seen in or at retina. This highlighted part is showing the layers of the retina. Now in the previous class we discussed this in detail. Now when we see this layer wise, this is the first layer, second layer and third layer and this extension is axons from ganglion cells to form optic now. Now when you see the cells of the retina that we seen earlier, rods and core, the receptor cells extending towards the bipolar cells, then extends to the ganglion cells. That means the action potential that is generated at these rods and cones is transmitted towards bipolar cells. Bipolar cells then this transmit towards the ganglion cells and the axons from these ganglion cells that from optic now carries this information or this impulse. Now the object that is seen to our eyes from outside that reflects first over the retina. Now when we see the retina there are two divisions the central retina and peripheral retina. Now we will discuss the most important concept to understand this mechanism. First you should understand visual field. What is exactly meant by the visual field? Now what is meant by the visual field? The entire area that can be seen by a single eye, by another single eye, that is called as the visual field. What I can see with my right eye, this total field is called as visual field of the right eye. Why? What I can see from my left eye, that is the visual field of my left eye. Now there are two visual fields that is independent of two eyes. This is the visual field what I map is of visual field of a right eye. This is the visual field of left eye. But when you see carefully both this field overlaps each other. There is an overlapping of these fields. And this type of field is called a binocular field of vision. We have the binocular field of vision. Now we should know how we map or mapping of this visual field. The mapping of visual fields is done by a number of methods. These methods are basically classified into two groups. First method is called as confrontation method and another method is called as perimeter. Confrontation method is a clinical method by which we map or we can map the visual field while the perimetry these are again divided into two groups either manual perimetry or automated perimetry. Using perimetry in the lab we can map this visual field systematically. While the, using this confrontation method we can judge the patient's 
विजुअल फील्ड बाय क्लिनिकल मेथड्स दीज आर द टू मेथड्स बाय विच वी कैन मैप दिस विजुअल फील्ड्स बाय मोनोकुलर फील्ड ऑफ विजन इच आई इज टेस्टेड सेपरेटली द मोनोकुलर फील्ड और मोनोकुलर विजुअल फील्ड इज प्लॉटेड विथ फोविया एट द सेंटर द मोनोकुलर विजुअल फील्ड इज नॉट राउंडेड वेन यू सी केयरफुली ओवर दिस ग्राफ्स दिस इज प्लॉटिंग ऑफ मोनोकुलर विजुअल फील्ड दिस इज द मोनोकुलर विजुअल फील्ड ऑफ द राइट आय वाई दिस इज द मोनोकुलर विजुअल फील्ड ऑफ लेफ्ट आय इट इज नॉट एक्जैक्टली द राउंड द हॉरिजोटल एंड वर्टिकल मेरेडियंस करस्पॉन्ड टू दोज ऑफ रेटिना एंड डिवाइड द विजुअल फील्ड इन टू अपर टेम्पोरल अपर नेजल लोअर टेम्पोरल एंड लोअर नेजल वॉटर्स दिज आर शो इन दिस फिगर this is the temporal field of left eye this is the nasal field of left eye this is the upper field of left eye this is the lower field of left eye these are shown respectively in this figure imagine that this is your visual field that all that you can see with your left eye and your right eye when we look straight ahead and do not move your head or eyes there is another concept you should know blind spot now what is exactly meant by the blind spot this term you use or here earlier there is seen 15 degree to the temporal side of the visual field of each eye this is the location of blind spot on the horizontal meridian it corresponds to the location of the optic nerve head 15 degree to the nasal side of the retina of each eye now when we see the concept of the binocular field the binocular field combines the two monocular field of vision with fovea align with one another this is seen in this figure this is monocular visual field of right eye this is of left eye and this combined is called as binocular field of vision once we understand that binocular vision it dependent upon the extraocular muscles aligning the eyes so that an image fall on corresponding points on the retina of each eye this is essential for the brain to perceive a single image now what is diplopia diplopia occurs when the images are not aligned to fall on corresponding points of each retina then there is observed diplopia now when we see this visual field the image of an object in the visual field is inverted and reverted right to left on the retina the temporal field of the left eye is seen by the nasal retina of the left eye while the nasal field of the left eye is seen by the temporal retina of the left eye superior field of the left eye is seen by the inferior retina of the left eye while the inferior field of the left eye is seen by the superior retina of the left eye similarly the image inverted and reverted by the right eye once we understand this the i am repeating this part the image of an object in the visual field is inverted and reverted right to left on the retina there are first temporal field of the left eye is seen by the nasal retina of the left eye while the nasal field of the left eye is seen by the temporal retina of the left eye the superior field of the left eye is seen by the inferior retina of the left eye while the inferior field of the left eye is seen by the superior retina of the left eye similarly the image is inverted and reverted for the right eye 
Now, when we see in detail about the visual pathway, we'll be seeing one by one. First, optic now. The axons of the ganglion cells in the retina of the corresponding eye to form optic now. It outgrowth of diencephalon so is a CNS tract and not a true cranial now. Myelinated by oligodendrites. These are the characteristics of optic now. Second point regarding optic chiasma. It is located just anterior to the pituitary. There is observed partial crossing of optic nerve axons in optic chias is essential to binocular vision. There is a partial crossing that is observed at this optic chiasma. This partial crossing of optic nerve axons that are essential for the binocular vision. The axon from temporal field crosses while the axon from nasal field do not cross. Just remember this highlighting point. The axon from temporal field crosses while the axon from nasal field do not cross. Once we understand this part, third part is optic tract. The optic nerve fibers from optic chiasm continue as the optic tract and terminate in lateral geniculate nucleus of thalamus. Each tract contains axons that carry input from the contralateral visual field. That means left optic tract receives from right visual field while right optic tract receives from left visual field. Next part is lateral geniculate nucleus. It is primary termination of optic tract fibers. Now each lateral geniculate nucleus receives inputs from the contralateral visual field. The optic tract projections to pretectum for reflexes. Once we understand this part, the axons of lateral geniculate nucleus neurons travel to primary visual cortex. The primary visual cortex that area, area number 17. Just remember this part, primary visual cortex area number 17 via the geniculocalcarine tract located in the retrolenticular and sublenticular portions of the internal capsule. The axons from upper visual field take a looping course into the temporal lobe on the way to visual cortex. The axons from lower visual fields take a more direct route to visual cortex. The macular fibers are in an intermediate location in the optic radiation. When we see the next component that is primary visual cortex. The primary visual cortex that is area number 17, area 17 of cortex. This primary visual cortex is located on either side of and within the calcarine fissure. The upper fields project to the lingual gyrus, lower fields projects to the cuneus. Macular representation is the most caudal in area 17, while the peripheral field representation is seen in the, the contralateral visual field. The next component is association visual cortex that is area 18 and area 19. Now there is the inputs from area 17 and deals where that deals with complex aspect of the vision. Now this association visual area deals with the complex aspect of the vision. The lesions of this area result in visual agnosia. Once we understand this complex part, that different component of visual pathway, once we understand 
the basic outline of this visual pathway we'll see the mechanism in detail now when we see the mechanism of visual pathway the optic nerves from the both eyes meet and crosses at optic isthma you understand this part the optic isthma which is located at the base of hypothalamus of the brain at this point of at this point the information coming from both eyes is combined and then splits according to the visual field this is the first first part the coordinating halves or half of the field of view that is right and left are seen to the left and right half of the brain respectively to be processed that is the right side of primary visual cortex deals with the left half of the field of view from both eyes and similarly for the left eye, left brain the information from the right visual field travels into the left optic tract while the information from left visual field travels into the right optic tract each optic tract terminates in the lateral geniculate nucleus that is lgn in the thalamus then this lateral geniculate nucleus when you see is a sensory relay nucleus in the thalamus of the brain this lateral geniculate nucleus consists of six layers in humans this is the structure that shows you this six layer and structure of this lateral geniculate nucleus which is located in thalamus now there are in the different layers or six layers now this of this layers 1 4 and 6 correspond to the information from contralateral fibers of the nasal retina while the red layers 2 3 and 5 correspond to the information from ipsilateral fibers of the temporal retina while the layer 1 contains yum cells which correspond to the yum cells of the optic nerve of the opposite eye and are concerned with depth and motions once we understand this configuration and the importance of these different layers of this lateral geniculate nucleus i am repeating to this part to you layer 1 4 and 6 correspond to the information from the contralateral fibers of the nasal retina that is temporal visual field layers 2 3 5 correspond to the information from the ipsilateral fibers of the temporal retina that is nasal visual field while the layer 1 contains yum cells which correspond to the yum cells of the optic nerve of the opposite eye and are concerned with depth and motion once we understand this mechanism of this lateral geniculate nucleus that is located in thalamus we see the next component the neurons of the lateral geniculate nucleus then relay the visual image to the primary visual cortex now this primary visual cortex which is located at the back of the brain that is posterior part of the brain in the occipital lobe in and close to the calcarine sulcus this lateral geniculate nucleus is not just a simple relay station but it is also a center for processing it receives reciprocal input from the cortical and subcortical layers and reciprocal innervation from the visual cortex the optic radiations one on each side of the brain carry the information from the thalamic lateral geniculate nucleus to layer 4 of visual cortex the visual cortex is the largest system in human brain and is responsible for processing the visual image the region that receives information directly from lateral geniculate nucleus is called primary visual cortex the visual information then flows through a cortical hierarchy these areas include v2 v3 v4 and area v5 the exact connectivity depends on the species of the animals 
these secondary visual areas process a wide variety of visual primitives neurons in v1 and v2 respond selectively to bars of specific orientations or combinations of bar these are believed to support age and corner detection similarly the basic information about color and motion is processed here that means the processing of the information is seen or observed in second visual areas as visual information pass or passes forward through the visual hierarchy the complexity of the neural representations increases whereas a v1 neuron may respond selectively to a line segment of a particular orientation in a particular retinotopic location neurons in the lateral occipital complex respond selectively to complete object and neurons in visual association cortex may respond selectively to human faces or to a particular object this is the difference of working between two areas that is primary visual cortex and secondary visual cortex area all of neural representation may come to a level of specialization of processing into two distinct pathways the dorsal stream and the ventral stream pathway the dorsal stream commonly referred to as the wear stream is involved in first tier attention and communicates with regions that control eye movements and hand movements the ventral stream commonly referred as the what stream is involved in recognition identification and categorization of visual stimuli once we understand this overall outline and functioning of mechanism of visual pathway we will proceed to the second concept that is known as visual cycle of the visual begins that we with the detect of the vitamin a pigment molecule now this l1 cis retina is the light sensitive component of rod and cone photoreceptors in the first step of vision photoreceptors are activated when light induces the isomerization of l1 cis retinal to all trans retinal to generate a cellular response to light the l1 cis retinal in photoreceptors is linked to an opsin protein capable of activating signaling pathways together the l1 cis retinal and opsin protein are known as a visual pigment now this classical visual cycles involve the cycling of retinoids between the rod outer segment that is os that is called as outer segment the rod outer segment rod os and the rpe the visual cycle begins in the outer segment with all trans retinal release from opsin after reduction to all trans retinol the photo photo products cross the sub retinal space and enter the rpe where l1 cis retinal is regenerated in three enzymatic steps and return to the photoreceptors this is the figure just showing you the mechanism that we earlier discuss now this is a structure of this rod now when you see this is the structure of capillary this is rpe this i outline with this my pointer just observe this is rpe when the light strikes on the rod now when you see this just uh, look at my pointer and just try to see uh, and understand with my pointer when the light strikes on the rods now this rhodopsin 
there is a bleaching this is a lot of sin is splits this is a splitting is observed into opsin and all trans retina this is the first phase now this all trans retina is converted actively into all trans retina this all trans retina from this phase 2 enter in rpe that is this is all trans retina that enter now in rpe now this all trans retina by phase wise is converted into l1 c l1 cis retina now this all trans retina also we receive from the capillaries now this all trans retina in phase wise is here converted into l1 cis retina and this l1 cis retina is again shifted into rod to form rhodopsin with the help of opsin now this opsin protein that it joins with the l1 cis retina to form rhodopsin and this cycle repeats once we this is called a visual cycle once we understand this visual cycle the retinal pigmented epithelium that is rpe is a single layer of polarized epithelial cells which plays many important roles for visual field or visual function this is rpe that we see in this figure this is the structure of the rod this is the structure of rpe what is rpe it is a retinal pigmented epithelium rpe and this repeat retinal pigmented epithelium is a single layer of polarized epithelial cells which plays many important roles for visual function one of such roles is production of visual chromophore that is production of l1 cis retina through visual cycle now this is the visual cycle that is working of this cycle when the light strikes over it it activates and is phase wise first phase second phase third phase activates and continues the visual cycle consists of bio biochemical process for regenerating chromophore by a collective action of the rpe and photoreceptor the photoreceptors harbor the g protein coupled receptors opsin which enables to receive light when it bounds to l1 cis retina now once we understand this fact with absorption of a photon of light l1 cis retina photo photoisomerizes to all trans retina the all trans retinal reduces to all trans retina in the photoreceptor and further recycles back to l1 cis retina in rpe once we understand this dysfunction of any retinoid cycle enzymes in rpe can cause retinal diseases now once we understand this oral part understand the mechanism of visual cycles then we see the third part of this session that is visual field defects now to understand this visual field defects we we'll go one by one strabismus strabismus is a condition in which the visual axis of the eyes are not parallel with the eyes appear to be looking in different directions now there are two kinds of strabismus one is a convergent strabismus and another one is divergent strabismus in convergent strabismus the visual axis converges while in divergent strabismus the visual axis diverges second one is diplopia diplopia is the simultaneous perception of two images of a single object is known as diplopia amblyopia it is a disorder of sight in which the brain fails to process inputs from one eye and over time favors the other eye scotoma scotoma is a break or interruption in visual field now there are two kinds of scotoma or two types of scotoma 
a positive scotoma and negative scotoma. A positive scotoma is one where the person actually perceives a patch blocking part of his or her vision. A negative scotoma is one where the person is not aware of the blind spot normally but which can detected which can be detected on visual field testing. Next term you should know inopia. Inopia is the inability to see an object that is anopia. Next one hemianopia. Hemianopia is a visual field loss on the left or right side of the vertical midline that is what is hemianopia. It can affect one eye but there, is, there are observed usually observed it affects both eyes. Now there are see, two types of hemianopia homonymous hemianopia or heteronymous hemianopia. In homonymous hemianopia is a hemianopia or hemianopic visual field loss on the same side of the both eyes that is homonymous hemianopia while the heteronymous hemianopia are attributable to the bilateral disorders of the eyes. Now once we understand this term I want to show these terms on powerpoint strabismus just remember this term strabismus divergent strabismus convergent strabismus diplopia amblyopia scotoma a positive scotoma a negative scotoma anopia hemianopia homonymous hemianopia heteronymous hemianopia or heteronymous defects then once we understand these different visual field defect terms we will just correlate with the visual pathway now when there is observed the central scotoma now when there is a damage to the A part that means when the damage is seen to the at retinal level this is the A that I pointed out in my figure that is this is the when there is a damage at this retinal level that is A there is observed central scotoma now B monocular vision loss that means complete loss of vision of one eye now when there is damage that is seen to this optic nerve now so this is the damage there is in the right side optic nerve damage that is B there is seen a monocular vision loss that is B third is bitemporal hemianopia C when there is damage is seen at this optic eyes there is seen a bitemporal hemianopia when there is a damage to the D, G and H D means at here D, G and H this is D, G and H now D, G and H see carefully once you understand these three parts D that is seen at optic track G that is seen at optic radiation and H that is seen at near optic radiation that D, G and H there is seen a contralateral homonymous hemianopia then when there is a damage is seen at E and J there is seen as contralateral superior quadrantopia now where is E and E and J this E when there is seen a optic radiation damage at E side and this is at J side then F and I there are observed contralateral inferior quadrantopia F and I this is the I my pointer is not working just see this is sorry this is the I and this is for F and K contralateral homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing that is a K now when you see this different damage different side for the damages on visual pathway carries corresponding visual field defects now this is another figure showing you the different lesions of visual pathway once we understand these different terms and lesions and the parts that damages to this or leading to the outcome or clinical outcome now we will see 
this week one video that explain you clearly how this working is going on now i just point out this video just see this video carefully this video is the summary of today's class what we discuss the basic three components first components we discuss in our class that is visual pathway second component today we discuss that is the visual cycle and third component we discuss different visual field defects now this video or this anime animated video show you the how exactly to remember different lesions with corresponding damage to the visual pathway now i just point out here this video to you now this is the basic structure just try to sketch in your spare time on your notebook this is the eyeball just sketch this eyeball this then sketch this optic now schematics this is the optic chiasma these are the lateral geniculate body these are optic tract just sketch this part like here then proceed to the second part then draw the respective visual fields this is the left and right side visual field just sketch and practice it so that we will understand it better then sketch the pathway now this pathway showing the extension uh, or the object carry the rays from this left visual field to the left eye now this is the extension of this tract of left side draw this carefully this is the extension of right side just see carefully now there are two field nasal field temporal field this is the journey of this nasal field and temporal field from this visual field to the optic radiation this is for the left side and this is for the right side just draw and practice it once we understand this left side right side temporal and respective nasal fields the journey or rays or carries from this from eyeballs from this optic nerve optic chiasma or an optic radiation now once we understand this or draw this sketch go to the next part then just draw the sketch towards another part of your notebook just sketch or just draw these visual fields now this is a normal visual field now suppose there is damage to the a that is this a suppose the damage is seen uh, at this optic nerve to the left eye what will be seen just see when there is in a damage to the left side there is in a left anopia now simultaneously when there is a damage to the right side there is of the right anopia now when there is a damage to the at b side that is optic chiasm what will be seen there is observed by temporal hemianopia in similar way when there is a damage is observed at c there is in the right homonymous hemianopia when there is a damage is seen at d it is an optic radiation there is seen right homonymous quadrantopenia now just try to revise this part and just try to understand these lesions respective lesions at respective sides of the visual pathway once we understand this part lesions their site and respective damage that is observed and the clinical outcome that we see as a visual field defects now today we class we summarize at this level and in next class we'll discuss the other clinical outcomes in details with 
some interesting facts like visual acuity, color blindness, etc. Thank you, students, for helping me. Thank you. Wakade, huh?